disciplines that they are involved in. History by itself, Randy, is nowhere near enough for a bookstore or for a world. All right? So what we need to think is beyond or in addition to history. We need economics. We need media. We have over here, I think we had over here, uh, Sean. Sean is into theater. He calls himself the Michael Jordan of black theater. Well, if we look over the period of the last 50 years, how many black playwrights have been published? Very small number, very small number. So it's got to be more than history. It's got to be more than economics. It's got to be more than newspapers. And so when we talk about these things, like black bookstores or publishers or black print media, we have to talk or think or try to think holistically, holistically. There's a world that black folks need to explore in multiple languages. Right. So, so broaden your, broaden your perspective. Thanks. Anybody else? Uh, one other thing I wanted to, to say, uh, in the room we have represented, I think, with Black Star, uh, Source. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever done um, a collaborative together also? Because, you know, if you're carrying different types of books and different clientele, that's where we have to start with the team's win. Because sometimes if you collaborate with each other and put on events together, that's a larger gathering that you would have. So I don't know, have you ever done that before? What we have done is this. Those bookstores that are still in existence, that are small indies, mm -hmm. what we don't have, we will call the other store for the customer if they're in our face mm -hmm. and we'll send them to that particular store. That's one of the things we do. Uh, we do order books. We do some special orders. Um, so in terms of collaborating with an already existing African-American bookstore in the city of Detroit, we send folks to 90s because they're still in business. Um, we know the truth is open on the weekends right. at Northwest at, at Activity Northwest, Center. Yeah, I was gonna we send that, people yeah. to Northwest Activity and she's Center. looking for a location, everybody. Mm -hmm. So if anybody knows a, a place that she can go. Um, Did somebody say something? I know. I know she's doing it, but she still needs the, the place. Uh, even after she gets the money, she needs an actual location that she can afford. Then she so needs to also visit Tech Town. Yeah. She needs to visit Tech Town and Hatch and yeah, that I've given her some folks there. Some because they well. assist also with doing pop-ups or temporary locations until she's able to uh, get on her feet. Mm -hmm. Right there in Tech Town, there's space available where possibly, maybe, she could get um, something that's a little bit more permanent than just a weekend at Northwest activities. Mm -hmm. Another thing that um, the car talked about was um, we have to print, and Mr. Vaughn as well, that we have to print our own mm -hmm. books and things. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I know it takes a lot of money for the different kind of presses that you need, web press for a newspaper and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, just entered the room a couple minutes ago was um, is James Mays and uh, his daughter Elizabeth, who all of you know has been in the printing business for years. So, and that was this was something that James wanted to do several years ago when we had the different black uh, newspapers. Uh, I think there was a Howland Park newspaper. Uh, E course, I think there was a girl doing a telegram, mm -hmm. doing a newspaper. Um, what's the other lady? Um, yes. Sarah, right. Uh, and he wanted to get everybody together so we can print our own newspapers, but that never did materialize. So I don't know if, if he's here. You like to kind of speak to some of those um, the things that we're talking about of getting together and and getting the word out. But you might be doing something different now. But I just wanted to give you an opportunity. And let everybody know that you guys are here in the audience as well. Okay. Uh, we're basically doing the same thing. You know, uh, we're uh, doing the uh, short run books, the uh, paperback books. Um, and we're also doing the actual newspapers, which have the uh, joint adventures with the uh, newspaper 
publishing houses, and uh, we also do books. Uh, we basically started off doing paper pamphlets, and uh, it was very successful about 10 or 15 years ago. And uh, we manufactured a lot of paper pamphlets. And for some reason, it started to die down <coughs> the cost of minority. They started going to the majorities to basically get it done. They were, they were shopping for a better price or uh, more. They just wanted to go, you know. But um, <coughs> the book manufacturing business and the newspaper business and the magazine business is a multi billion dollar market throughout the United States. And it's ironic because we do not participate in that market that basically belongs to us. Whether it's newspapers, paperback books, hardcover books, the your magazines, and the school books. The uh, School systems through the United States. And there was a time that we used to print for the, uh, the uh, large book manufacturers, which was uh, our, our delegate size. Mm -hmm. And they were like, at that time, they were like, it was like $80 million firm, and they had manufacturing plants all over. And uh, during that time, they sought us out to print the, uh, the school book covers. Mm -hmm. And we printed the book covers on a uh, 67 vellum paper. And then we UV coated it. And we sent the, uh, the excuse paper out to the manufacturing plants. And they physically made books out of it. But, um, you know, we attempted it, you know, but the, but the most important thing is that we do not control our own time. As a consumer, and we have to do that. Yeah. It is still not too late to do it. That's right. That's right. And it's uh, just like Beverly said, all we have to do is get together. No, we got to do a little more than that. And we we got to do a lot together. more than just get together. Mm -hmm. But we're losing, we're losing a lot of money on things, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of power. Carl, one of the subjects that we seem to, to shy away from, which is central to our survival, is economic. We can mm -hmm. never take an issue of economics and dealt with it from a holistic point of view. We are consumers, and that means that we will always be poor. Until you are in a position where you are less of a consumer and more of a producer, then you can break through this barrier. But as long as we are consuming, we cannot get over this barrier. We can't do it. We have to become producers. Whatever. It is. Yeah, that's um, that's certainly true, and then you will have to push that to another level in your discussion because the economy itself, though we produce for uh, almost 300 years, we didn't get anything for it. You see, so someone is in charge of that. And uh, even the discussion around the capitalist process has to be understood. You know, if you're going to use it, how are you going to find a way to make sure that just a few people don't, don't just get rich, you know. How are you going to find a way to make sure that that pyramid ends up being uh, rectangular or something so all people get something out of it? There's a lot of discussions when we talk economics. Most people just think there's one system. That's why we did this book. Most people think their capitalism has been around since the planet started. It's only 260, 70 years old. I'm trying to explain something. It's just like uh, feudalism was here, and there was no capitalism. Remember? The whites came over here with a dying feudal system. There was no capitalism. And they used us 
using chattel slavery to build capitalism for them. So most people don't even get an appreciation for systems coming in and going out. This capitalist system is going out. That's why we had to write the book to explain why it's going out. It's not going out because of personalities. It's going out because there's a new mode of production, robotic computerized production, that can produce things much more efficiently than human labor. And so we were first to go because they put us on the bottom of all of this. And so, you know, the prisons are open because that's where people, they don't need anymore. You saw yesterday, I had to say this, it wasn't yesterday, it was a few days ago. It was a video in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where the cops just walked this guy down, his car broke down. And I, you know, I just thought that that could have been me easily. And they walked him down and just shot him. And it's on video. I don't know if you all have seen this black guy. I mean, the police just shot him. I just want to end this and say that our lives are not worth two cents. This is not like doing slavery. You know, they use one person to scare 10,000. Well, this period, they just kill you. They're not trying to scare anybody. They just kill you. So we have to really study, when you say economics, don't just get caught up in studying the capitalist system, understand it, and try to figure out well, what is next that we should be working on. And that's why I push teamwork all the time, because we've got to find a way to work together on whatever we're doing and find a way to make sure everybody gets something out of it. You know what, I didn't want to mention that, but the, the robots, I don't know if anybody knows about that. Yeah. But and it's very, very serious because they said that they were made to carry the groceries, to teach, to work in hospitals, and that's another reason why they're doing this great way. And these are, uh, uh, they have skin, they have cameras in their eyes, they're making people. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, they can eliminate other people. That's not that's not where we're at. <laughs> no, we're, we're here. Right. We're here. What I'd like to we're say is... We're not making is, robots. <laughs> no, no. We're making them yeah. We must recalibrate our thinking about literacy. And the book industry grows. We have to realize it's now a global industry, and we are global people. And translation has grown. English writers from all parts of the diaspora are writing and being published. Self-publishing is still an option for anybody who wants to do it. More independent bookstores are opening. In fact, there's been an increase in independent bookstores within the past year of 11%. Are you speaking about black independent bookstores? Huh? Black independent right. bookstores have grown. Right. Not to the 11%, but in other cities they have grown. There's, a, there's an increased presence of black bookstores, too, in other communities. Independent bookstores are bought and sold all over the country. And professional help is always available on how to buy books, how to purchase bookstores, going through organizations such as Great Lakes Independent Book Association. There's even the Association of African American um, Book Clubs. They can assist with selection and ordering books. So there's a wide variety of resources that are out there. It's kind of like a secret society, though. It's kind of like if you're in the middle of a fraternity or sorority and only you have the code. But those codes are available to be cracked. You just have to have the interest, and you also have to have heart. And you have to have tenacity if this is what you want to do. And that is to get involved in the book business, either as a dealer, or a bookstore or as a writer. It requires such a level of gut and tenacity that you have to have because no one's going to hand you anything. There's not a grant for it. There's no one that's going to uh, leave you an inheritance for it unless you're one of the few fortunate black folks that are somehow connected with that 1%. And that's just how it is. Does Mr. Vayner have his book in print on uh, I do have some copies in Alabama in my museum, but uh, I can re I can uh, copy it and send it to whoever wants it. Just give me your name, address, and phone number. I'm, I'm a dumb man with a smartphone, so I need a mailing address. <laughs> <laughs> you know the autobiography yet? You know the autobiography yet? 
have I done all of it? I'm working on that. I'm working on a trilogy of, of my life. I'm 82 years old. I got three sections, and uh, they've been some rough sections, but uh, I'm doing it. Oh, oh, that's a great market for used bookstores, too. Let me just tell you that. So, and, and there are a lot of black books that are out of print uh, that people want. People call me all the time, all over the country. Asking for certain books. Do, do you have the, the wonderful Ethiopians and the, the ancient Arabs and the wonderful yes, Kushite? Is, that, is that, the, uh, that the title, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. I, I don't have it. I, I gave know. it to somebody and never got it back. And I'll never do that again. <laughs> I, was, I was just wondering whether or not, uh, in the time you have uh, you know, published, written, uh, sought to be published, have you ever? There are, last time I checked, and maybe about 10 years ago, there were 205, I believe, uh, black newspapers in the country. Do you know of any, uh, have they ever gotten together to see about pushing black books? Well, well they have an association. Uh, the black, black news folks have an association. They tried to push uh, black authors. And I know. I know. Newspapers have an association. That's yeah. yeah. If you wrote a book, it would appear sometimes this month in two hundred five newspapers. No. The Association of Black Librarians. Mm -hmm. They're quite supportive of, of African American librarians as well as uh, African American writers. So. When you look into um, the professional library associations, that is that is one uh, source of information. And the Library of Congress now, the head of the Library of Congress is an African American librarian. And she's so not an academician. She's okay. coming from walk up, put your book in the slot, Chicago Library. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. I wasn't going to say anything. I was just going to come in and kind of listen. I've been in the print industry for 20 years. I know I look young, but I'm 50. Um, I have a solution. I think I have a solution. First of all, I, I know you. Your daughter, Deidre, and her went to school together. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got the connection. Um, this, this, this collaborative effort is so highly needed. Uh, books, I, I grew up with books. My mother had a library for us and would love them. And I still have a stack of them on the side of my bed that I kind of dip in all the time. Dip in from black history to um, enlightenment, you know, higher consciousness to uh, picture books, because I'm a photographer, not by trade, but I'm a graphic designer by trade. I own the company around D-Town Promotions, by the way. Um, it's been around for eight years. Um, a solution to this, to me, because I build websites as well, is to have a resource directory one on with all the black publishers, the bookstores, anything print, anything books should be on this resource directory so that everybody can be found. I can help with this initiative. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I'm here for, because I'm, I'm passionate about it. As quiet as I am as I get older, I still have a passion. I do a lot of things still in quiet. Uh, another thing we should do is make this an association. You know, there's an organization in New York right now that have an annual book fair. It is huge. It is still alive today. And I look at it. And I pondered over it for years saying, man, we need to really have this in Detroit. I still love books. You know, I do t-shirts and baseball caps and jackets, and I work with kid programs all over the city. Um, so the kids, they still need to be connected to the books. I have a bookstore online right now. It's called DetroitBookCity.com. Um, I switch out the books periodically. It's not growing as it should because I'm focusing more on my prep end because it pays my bills. But I have like 300 books in my storage for all nationalities, all ages, all genres, not nonfiction, fiction, uh, just a variety of books that I've collected from book library book sales to the Goodwills. I'll go out and I'll find these books and I have built up about 300 to 400 books in my storage right now. And if I had enough time in my daytime, I could probably go out to schools and set up book fairs. That's another avenue, is to set up book fairs. These parents don't want their kids to read. Trust me, I'm with them every day. They want the best opportunities for them. So as an initiative here, this should be an association. We should have a web directory. We should have an annual show. And we should offer uh, book fairs at the school level. Mm -hmm. That's a nutshell right there. Now, now turn the arrow around. That's 
that's the important thing that we need to think and speak to, is turning the arrow around to ourselves, as well as somebody, anybody, you, you want to, you have, you have, you know, the arrow you think? Oh, are you even? Yeah, oh. sure. All right, um, the question that I had for you guys was, are there any programs and or initiatives to bring in young people and um, try and spark their interest in reading and yes I can <laughs> my uh, my question was are there any programs and or initiatives to bring in young people and spark their interest in reading and in learning not only our history but also the other things that you mentioned which was a well-rounded scope of learning I would say yes. Well, we have pro we have programs in Alabama uh, that I've been working with uh, with, with the children. I, I, I organize drill teams because that's that, that's what, what the mayor fired me about because I wanted to. I, I studied revolutions, and I know discipline is very important in any revolution. And Mao took China with a handful, and uh, 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 Fidel took uh, Cuba with a handful. But I think that if we organize, our, well, I've done it. And we did it, and it was successful. Now, Professor Haywood and I, and and uh, 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 Sister Love, we organized the kids in Brewster Project. We stopped dope from coming in Brewster Project. Now, you think that came? You no, know, we did it. So, and that, and the drill team was the basis of it. Because I got fired for doing it. I think the library is doing an excellent job of bringing uh, children to literacy. The Detroit Public Library System. And in terms of adolescents, I think um, with the advent of the hype centers that are highly programmed for adolescents, where they can physically move through literacy, where it's not stagnant, um, I think that is one of the best programs. What we do is source booksellers. Um, we just automatically invite youth in. Uh, particularly we get them like um, five days before that uh, term papers do mm. and we have absolutely sat with you uh, in order to, for them to get their bibliographies together and ultimately have sent them to the library so I think in terms of a um, of a business of connecting youth to literacy I think the libraries do it far better than any brick and mortar bookstore possibly ever could. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think no, so. I do. I do have a because suggestion. Because availability. If you all don't mind. Oh, sure. I, I was um, going to mention that one of the things that a lot of young people are excited about in today's time, of course, is social media, but also documentaries mm -hmm. and hip hop artists. So I think it would be a fantastic idea to pull a lot of the people that are from the element not just the kids who parents make them go to the library. Right. I'm talking about the, the kids who hang out on the corner. Boys in the hood. Yeah, mm -hmm. pull out, I'm, I'm, I'm a boy in the hood, so I, <laughs> I understand their plight. Right. So I think it'd be a fantastic idea to pull in the boys in the hood by bringing out speakers and having debates at these bookstores. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people watch the debates on YouTube and it's kind of confrontational, but at the same time, it allows us to let that alpha male energy out and that will make them excited to want to learn and pick up books like the gentleman selling down there. I just had a response to your question. So last year, I started an initiative called Library for Me, and it is essentially a grassroots initiative that takes used books and puts it in the hands of kids. Uh, we were able to collect over 1,200 books so far and created 100 libraries in the homes of children in the inner city. Right. And all this is free. We take from the community and give it right back to the community. And so there are programs out there, and I've learned and got to network with a lot of organizations that already exist that do similar things. I think we just need to kind of go away from the idea, in a sense, of the brick and mortar or the library, right. because kids are now showing interest in other things. So if you meet them where they're at, put the books in their home. Um, because many parents have to make a decision, do I buy this pair of shoes, or can I afford a, an average cost of $10 book for my fourth grader? And if they don't have to make that decision, if you can give them the resources without necessarily making them make the decision, then you've already put your, you've already have your foot in the door for a lot of progress. Um, I also want to mention that they started a freedom school. They started a freedom school here, and then 
uh, Gloria House. And it's on Saturdays from 9.30 to 12. So that uh, they're, they're actually uh, checking out who comes and they want to find out what are you interested in. And they gear it toward the child's interest. Right. And they have books and all kinds of YouTube and stuff that is interesting to that child. So if you know of any kids who are middle school or high school, tell them to come down on Saturdays. It's like until December 17th. Okay. And then I guess they'll probably start back up in January. But we have it here in this room right here where you're sitting. Nice, nice. Thank you. 9.30 to 12 on Saturday. Well, one of the biggest frustrations <laughs> that I have, uh, particularly in the last uh, 20, 25 years, is getting people to understand and appreciate the political economy of what has occurred in this city, and I'm finding out more and more in other cities all around the nation of just what has happened to us in terms of the political economy addressing questions like, why Dennis Archer wasn't a one-term mayor and we didn't elect Ed Vaughn, of why we didn't use a program uh, uh, on a uh, nuisance abatement repair to own to reclaim residential and commercial property that was established by a black woman, Irma Henderson, 30 years ago. Keep it on, on, keep it on books, keep it focused now. Okay. <clears throat> on books. Okay, I, I've, I've, got, I've got some books. It, if people would read and understand uh, what happened in this book, The Origin of the Urban Crisis, Race and Inequality in Post-War Detroit, you would understand that we are still locked in the same cycle that we have been ever since uh, 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 Dr. Sweet uh, got his case won by Clarence Darrow 90 years ago this year. Uh, I catch the most difficult time of uh, looking for outlets uh, locally, nationally, black, white, any color that will help explain to people uh, what has happened with things like privatization, with these constant wars, with together. what really happened, okay. with the economic crisis that resulted in the foreclosures of 10 years ago, and how, and how uh, uh, institutions like the land bank are seizing our land right and left, and why our politicians are such capons. You're all focused. No, I'm very focused. Oh, yes. A billion dollars lost to the impoverished zone. Our tax dollars. Right on, brother. Yes, it was. Okay. The reason why we're here, but what I see, is to have the, the, the book publishing, the, the newspaper, and the magazine survive for the next 30 years. <laughs> okay, now, when I came out of college in 1977, there was a revolution that was changing it from, from the uh, old method of printing press over to the uh, old offset print. Computers were coming in. Everything was turning over. You know, full color printing was coming in, wet printing, and like I said, diversification with the youth and technology and managing information and taking the same platform is where it's at right now. <clears throat> Put ink on paper, it still works. But what we've done at the actual maze room is that I've turned everything over to my daughter, which she has come out of Western Michigan, Western Michigan University, in degrees in technology, in the uh, magazine and the book publishing business. Now, what we've done is that we changed our name, which we're a multimedia, and she explained more how we take the uh, same platform that's used for the magazine publishing, book publishing, and we take the new technology and we send it out. Now, if you take for example, we do a lot of work. Work comes out of, out of China that we print, Africa, South Africa, Ghana, all over the United States. 
and she will like explain to